to Jai Long and this is Make Your Break. Whether you're a big-hearted creative or an aspiring entrepreneur, let's take action on your dreams. Reconnecting you with your why and giving you the how. I'm here to dish out actionable mindset tips and fun industry secrets to help you blow up your biz. From eye-opening reality checks to motivational gold, no two episodes are ever the same. So tune in weekly, skip the FOMO, and let's dive into the deep together. Hey, we're back. Guess what? Today, I'm talking with another brilliant mind. Uh, On the show, I like to talk to a lot of creative entrepreneurs, wedding photographers, videographers, designers, actors, musicians, like so many different people and everyone brings a different perspective. And it's so cool to see how people have made their break. And it's so cool to follow along on people's journeys and get inspired and get the next strategy and everything else. And it's, and it's really fun for me to be able to share all those things with you, especially as you drive in your car or you're going for a walk in the morning or, you know, sitting there editing some photos, like whatever you're doing today, shout out to you for listening, learning, and being obsessed with self-learning because I appreciate you and your future self is going to thank you as well. Now today, no exception to all the brilliant minds that I have. I've got Rebel here with me and she's from her business called One Wild Collective. Now, she's just joined the Six Figure Business Map and she actually sent me a message and she was like, Jai, how wild would it be if I actually jumped onto your podcast today and we talked about some of my unrealistic goals and the things that I'm working towards and the life that I want in 12 months time because I'm so committed and I'm dedicated to make a change in my life. Now, if we could do that today, then in 12 months time, I can actually listen back and I can see if I hit the goals, also the mindset that I was in and how hungry I was, and then how far that I actually came. So today is a episode one of a two-part series. Unfortunately for everybody, you have to wait a little while for series uh, part two because it's going to come out in 12 months time. But for today... I think where Rebel is in her business, a lot of people are going to relate, you know, so she's just invested big into getting a coach. She's serious right now about leveling up her business. She's going all in. She's getting uncomfortable. She's getting on a podcast. She's making all the right moves. She's meeting the right people. She's getting into a new room. And I would love to see with her ambition mixed with my strategy, how far she can actually come and if she actually hits the six figure mark. And you know what? I would like to actually see if she hits it sooner than 12 months, because I know a lot of people that I work with, we always set big giant 12 month goals, but a lot of the times we can hit it earlier. Now, this is not a competition. If you didn't hit it earlier, we've got to remember everybody works at their own pace and we all have different scenarios and different things going on. And, you know, you got to have empathy and grace for yourself because we're not here to win a race. We're here to do something meaningful and have purpose, you know, and that's the most important thing. But sometimes it is really nice to surprise ourselves by creating big goals and then actually achieving these things a lot sooner than we ever, ever, ever thought that was possible. And for me, I think that I'm always trying to do that and I'm always trying to push that, you know, to everybody because I believe that so many of us, we underestimate our own potential. And I think wasted potential is one of the biggest wastes that we have as humans. We can do so much and we can create so much and we can bring so much happiness. And and I think those things are really give us a lot of purpose, especially with our careers as creative entrepreneurs, especially as we're out there doing the things. We're in the trenches, we're learning the things. We're creating something that we love. We're serving people at the highest level. We're doing, we're creating art. And I think that is so, so important. So to be along on this journey with Rebel, like it doesn't get lost on me. For me, it's a big deal. Not only does she invest in me and my strategies, but for me to be alongside her and she trusts me with her business, like it is a big deal. And I don't think I talk about this enough really, but it makes my heart so full. But also it's humbling to know that I get to be part of so many people's big journeys of in life, right? I honestly think like, Starting a business is the same as like starting a family or getting married or, you know, as big as anything else that you're ever going to do in in your life, buying your first home. And so to be alongside, you know, Rebel and, and thousands of other people on that journey right now, like it feels so amazing to be able to even just help, even if I'm just helping just a tiny little bit, give everybody just a little leg up. It's so rewarding for me, so fulfilling. And it's one of the reasons why I'm a full-time business coach now instead of a full-time photographer. For for me, this is my calling and this is what I love doing. And talking to people like Rebel is what I love to do. Now, just one quick favor. If you haven't left a review for the podcast yet, 
I know I ask all the time, but if there's been some amazing content on here, I've been on here for three years now. We don't have that many reviews and we literally have hundreds of thousands of people have downloaded this podcast. And so I'd love for you to show up for me like I've shown up for you. You know, I show up week in, week out, and I read the reviews every single week personally because I love doing it. So if I've impacted you in some way, if my guests have helped you in some way, if you want to give back some of that kindness, like please do. There's a link in the show notes underneath here in the description of this episode. You can click that and you can leave a review and I really appreciate it. Hey, I have Rebel here. Uh, she just joined the Six Figure Business Map not too long ago. Actually, only just a few weeks ago, I think. And um, today we're going to talk about uh, her mindset and the process of signing up to something as big as that, um, joining a new community, and then where she's at with her business now. And then in 12 months time, we're actually going to do a bit of a recap and see how much she's grown and what she's learned over the last 12 months. So this one's going to be a slow burn for you, but it's well worth the wait. And I think it's so important for us to see and track transformation because it's so so important. We work so hard all the time and sometimes we don't see everything ourselves. It's not until we look back, then we see all the big results that we've had. So, hey, Rebel, how are you? Good. How are you? Good. Hey, do you want to introduce yourself to us? All right. My name's Rebel. I am owner of One Wild Collective. I primarily shoot weddings in Brisbane, Australia. I have a little two-year-old Tara (laughs) and I'm due to have my second little girl in September and my husband works away. So I'm literally a single, about to be a single parent to two kids. So it's wild, but a it's lot of work, huh? Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. So how long have you been in business for? So I started my own company in 2020. I came off of maternity leave and decided that I didn't want to go back and work for someone else. So I was like, I'm just going to have to learn how to hustle. And I started One Wild in 2020. Cool. And so tell me how, like when you first started and everything, tell me like the process. Did you just out the gates, book lots of work or has it been like a bit of a slow process? Um, Yeah. It was a slow burn at first. I was lucky in a way that I had second shot quite a few weddings beforehand because I'd always been interested in photography. I've literally had a camera since like 2010, but yeah, it was sort of like a slow ease into it. And then all of a sudden I went, I'm not going back to work. I've really got to get it together. So I started doing like a million and one like mini sessions and like portrait shoots and things like that. And it was literally like $75 for like a hundred photos for people. And I was like, I think I'm in over my head. (laughs) So did you kind of like um, hit the ground running, saying yes to every client, trying to take on everything, feeling a little bit overwhelmed, overworked and burnt out for the price that you're charging? Yeah, 100%. And because I had a newborn too, I was just like, oh, what have I done? Yeah, it's so funny. We get into that situation so often where we just say yes to everything, especially when we're first starting out. We don't know when to put on the brakes and then we kind of go, "Uh oh, we're not really getting paid enough for all this work and everything else that we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So where was your business at? So before you joined the business, Matt, which was only a few weeks ago, sort of talk me through the biggest pain points and and any frustration you had with your business. I think my issue has always been with clients. Yeah, I hate clients as well. (laughs) (laughs) I've just always struggled to find like the client that I want to work with. There's always been something that I'm like, oh, that doesn't sit right. But like I would take them anyway and then I would regret it later. Can you give me an example of a client like that? The first solo wedding I ever shot, the bride absolutely refused to give me a shot list. And I was like, oh, Uh, and I was really, really hating it. And I was like, look, I'm going to go into it with my standard shot list. And then like she signed the contract. I I knew to cover myself, but then she decided to be really nasty about it. She left a couple of bad reviews. She got all of her friends to leave bad reviews because 
she there was a specific photo that she wanted that she didn't get on the day because she wasn't in her shot list. And I took the client anyway because wow. I was like, oh, it's money and like it's my first wedding. But wow. Yeah, I messed up big time. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, we all learn from all these, all these past experiences, don't we? Absolutely. Yeah. So do you always <laughs> get a shot list now? Yeah. It's it's in the contract that if you don't have a shot list, I yeah, I will either write one for you and you will <laughs> make like sure that that's okay. Or <laughs> Oh yeah, it's yeah. Yeah, fair enough. And so to this day, have you had any um ideal clients? I've had the last wedding I actually shot was my ideal client and I didn't know until a couple of days beforehand that she also had like my dream wedding planner. <laughs> so I worked with this woman who was phenomenal and she literally had I've never seen anyone do wedding planning like she has. Everyone's always running around like a headless chicken and Amy was just like so chill. She had it all together. She had like this whole PDF printed out for everyone. So absolute dream that wedding was. Sounds to me, and I'm looking in the background, you've got like a little whiteboard there and some lists there. It sounds like you'd like (laughs) to be organized. I may have an issue with it. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm hearing right now. And so... You, do you find the clients that you least love to work with the ones that are less organized? Yes and no. I love knowing that I can actually help out my clients and like if there's a process or something that they need a hand with that I can be like, yeah, I'll totally help you plan your timeline. But also I think that's just because I'm a little bit of a control freak. <laughs> so I, I don't mind if clients are organized on their own. And I really love when they have planners, specifically because of a few people that I've worked with that have had on the day vendors and the on the day vendors have just been like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what's going on because they haven't been there for the whole process. But yeah, I don't know. I don't mind either way. I think way. you've got to be a control freak. I know that you sort of said that as if it's a negative thing, but you need to be because <laughs> if you're not, then yeah. you're out of control. And I think yeah. so many people celebrate like being out of control opposed to being in control. And I'd rather Can be in control <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Especially at a wedding or especially if I'm, you know, with clients and things like that. Like at least yeah. if I'm not in control, I'll let my clients know that I am in control and I'll sort of exert that into all those situations just to make sure that they feel at ease because yeah. we're herd animals and we and we like to we like to follow someone and we like someone to be in control. So if we're a photographer and we can't even control our clients and the things that are happening on a wedding day, it gets pretty hard. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So tell me over the course of the last couple of years, kind of going from like not booking your perfect clients to now starting to, starting to book your perfect clients. Have you been increasing your prices? I have definitely. (laughs) And have you seen a difference between the people that you're booking? Absolutely. I stopped running mini sessions about Christmas time last year, everyone asked for them and I was like, oh, but every single time I've run like a, a portfolio update sale or a, some sort of minis, I've always had like a problem with the clients that I've booked. And then as soon as people are willing to pay full price, it's literally, oh yeah, no, no, whatever works best like for you, like we'll do whatever you need to do. I'll pay you today sort of thing. And yeah, it's oh amazing. my God, Big difference, it's just though. so different. So different. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't realize it, but you got to think, I always um, use the analogy, like it doesn't matter who you are. If you go to a buffet and it's all you can eat, a lot of the times that someone that goes there to a buffet that, you know, all you can eat, we always look around to like, what more can we get? And then is this enough? And then is there takeaway containers? Is there dessert? Like, you know, can I double fill my cup with drinks? And we want to take, 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 take. But if you go to like, you know, a classy restaurant where there's like a world renowned chef or something, whatever they create, we're happy with because we're like, oh my God, like this is the art that I came for. This is the, you know, the whole experience. It's all crafted for me and I don't mind paying a lot of money for not that much food because I'm here for this. And so I think about those analogies all the time with our clients, because I know for myself, when I started shooting weddings for free, it was very different to the clients that I got when I started for $500, then $1,000, then 
you know, $5,000, then $10,000 and then $20,000. And every client's mm. bracket that I've gone through has been completely different clients and they have different yeah. expectations and it's been different client experience for them, but also for me because I've had people that value who I am and, and what I do as I've increased my prices and it's made my life a lot easier. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, the same is with um with mentoring and everything like that. Like when I used to do mentoring for a hundred dollars an hour, like I got people that didn't value my time, and as I increased my prices, or even for instance, if I run a summit and you know it's like seven dollars, you know you get so many people complaining about everything, every little thing, asking for refunds. But then you have business map, which is two and a half thousand and no one complains because everyone no. there is like, <laughs> Hey, I paid, and I'm paying attention and, you know, different mindset, different mentality. So I think wherever yeah. we are in our, in our business, there's always a way that we can jump brackets and it come down to just price because price literally equals perceived value. And we value something we pay for and we'll always we will always pay attention to something that we feel like is a big investment for us. Yeah, absolutely. What about for like, um, obviously like you put up your prices and stuff, but have you changed your marketing and your messaging at all to sort of try and attract those different clients that you're looking for? I have. I started writing a blog as well, just for like little tips and tricks and things like that. I also have started curating a wedding info guide. So like if a client comes to me and they want to book a wedding, as soon as they pay the deposit, they get like a comprehensive, like it's about 30 pages long. It's like all of the things that you need to know from my experience. So even, even with family sessions, if someone books a family session with me, they get an info guide, they get like what to wear in certain times of the year, what to do, what to, you know, expect, all that sort of stuff. And I've found that the people that have booked that have literally gone on and said, oh, my God, to all their friends, they're like, this woman, like, she knew. So so you, like, preempted all their problems and then you've sold them and brought tremendous amounts of value. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And then so then they return that value to you and say, hey, yeah. Yeah. Love what you do. Okay. So your business in terms of like how well it's going right now and um, how much clarity you got and how much income you got and stuff, like what do you want to improve in your business? Like what, what was the thing that said, I need to join the business now, right now? I just, I first, originally I joined last year and then I just had a whole bunch of things that just like avalanche and I ran out of like all the time. And I didn't, I didn't take myself seriously enough to be like, no, I need to keep pushing. But I saw the value in it from like the month that I was in there. And I went, once I can get myself back to that point where I'm willing to put in the work and I can change my mindset, I'm going to go back in. So I genuinely joined because I did love the community while I was in there, but also there was just so many things that I never ever would have perceived or thought of myself. And then it's little things like in the in the pricing module, it's like this is how to set up this and X, Y, Z, and this is how I do it and this is what works for me. And it's little things that I've never thought of, like the vault that I'm like, oh, my God, it's so obvious but it's so genius <laughs> that I'm like, oh, I need that. So a whole bunch of different reasons, but every single reason is so worth it. So so for you, you're thinking like, I need to change my pricing and my financial structure. And then I also need to attract those right clients that are in line with what I'm doing. Yeah. hundred percent. Cool. And so for over the next 12 months, are you like, tell us about that. Like what are your big goals and uh, what are we going to do to get you towards those goals? (laughs) <laughs> well, after I come off maternity leave, <laughs> I want to hit 100,000 mark. I know I'm going to. I just haven't figured out exactly how yet. <laughs> Turn your business into um, a six-figure business? Yeah. I want the freedom that I always thought that I would have when I started my own business. And mm. I know that like I can work flexible hours and things like that, but I mean like actual freedom because 
for the last two years, it's been like whenever I get the chance to work, I'm sitting at my desk and I feel like I need to have you get more busy, family time. But you're not really yeah. making an impact and then you're losing yeah. your relationships. Yeah. And I'm like, I just want to spend time with my daughter on the weekends mm, and totally. my husband, when he's home, I want to spend time with him as well. So I definitely want more freedom. That's the one thing That's that a I'm huge like. Girl. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, so many people, we don't really put that on the priority list, but it's so, so important. And there's going to be, there's a lot of stuff in the new business map because when you did join the originally, it was an older version. So now it's yeah. a new version, but there's a lot of stuff in there in regards of productivity and like setting up your content calendar and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. All the things that you like because you like <laughs> to be organized. Um, the more organized that you are in your day-to-day life, the more that you can have fun. And people don't realize that. Like people always think, yeah. no, I'm a creative. I just want to do whatever I want, whenever I want. But the problem is you have anxiety because you don't know where the next leads are. You don't know what you're supposed to be working on or if you're moving the needle. And then we start going on and doing anything and everything all the time and then feeling frustrated because nothing's moving. But the more yeah, that you 100%. actually organize your day to day and your week to week, the more that you're going to have the freedom to spend with your family and do so many other things without having the guilt of thinking you need to work in your business all the time, especially yeah. if you're just trying to make a hundred thousand, which for you sounds like, you know, it's a lot in your, in your mind, of course, because yeah. you haven't done it. But for me, when I look at it, I'm like, you're going to do it easy. You know, it, yeah. it's not as hard as you think. And you don't have to work full time to do it either. It's little things like Asana. I set up Asana the other day and within like an hour, I got two days worth of tasks done because I actually had a process to work through. And I was like, this is so much easier than writing it down and forgetting about it and losing the paper. And I just, yeah, so many different things. Yeah, so many tiny little systems. (laughs) And then they all add into one huge thing to yeah. give you so much clarity. And one thing that we all know is like the cla- like overwhelm is the killer of most businesses, but clarity is the thing that empowers us to move forward with big impact. So if you don't know where you're going and what you're doing with who you should be doing it with and when you should be doing it and all those things, the overwhelm is real and you will never get anywhere. And that's why most people stay the same. They'll be in the same position next year as they are right now because they're like, oh, I don't need to learn all that stuff. Like I'm all good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm well, always cool. learning. <laughs> that's yeah. the one thing I learned. Well, my nana always said to me, if you don't learn something every day, you've wasted your day. So mm. that's a good lesson. So to move towards your um, having more time back and then hitting six figures is a lot of things going to just be like systemizing your business. So tell me sort of like what you're planning over the next 12 months to reach those goals. Well, a couple of things. I am planning on getting a VA. Luckily, my sister is a VA, (laughs) so hopefully I can get to the point where I can give her a couple of hours a week so that she can help me. She's got the brain for like analytics and she's the mathematical one who like knows all the things that I don't. And she's very, very Which is totally fine because you can just outsource that to someone like your sister that's got a superpower. Like, hey. But yeah, she's... She's also having a baby soon. So I'm like, well, we can just, you know, work together and do our thing. And then I help her and she helps me. So little things like a VA and I'm hoping to outsource some editing while I'm away as well. Yeah. And if listeners don't know what a VA is, it's a virtual assistant. So a virtual yeah. assistant, or you can have a VA or you can have an in-person assistant as well. So someone assists next to you, a virtual assistant is generally someone that is not in the room with you and they're virtual. So they're sitting on a computer somewhere, probably in Bali, living the dream (laughs) um, and helping you on your business. I'm sure she'd love to be in Bali while she does what she does. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, if if I employ her, I'd love to also be able to start outsourcing some editing, not most of it because I do love, like I live for it. But yeah, the things that I find really tricky are like reception photos sometimes when they're a bit noisy, I like send them off and I'm like, hey, can you fix this for me? Because I shot as best as I could, but like the noise is just intense. So yeah, just just a couple of little things that I think are really going to clear my mind so that I can keep pushing and keep going. That's perfect. And Kate, tell me a little bit more about, so that's like getting you some more time and stuff, but tell me about how you're going to steer your ship towards like aiming for your perfect client. 
I think this is definitely going to be a huge step in my marketing. Um, 100%. I'm pushing towards it more with the blogs that I'm writing. So I've done a couple where I've queued them up and like I'm just fixing them now, but it's like um, how to have a luxury budget on XYZ or if I want to have a venue like this but there's nothing around me, how do I go about creating that? So I think if I push more towards the clients that I do want with my blog and things like that, they're going to click on it and they're going to come to me. They're going to see that and they're going to be like, oh, she can help. So I think definitely a lot more pull and push marketing because it used to just be like, I'll do a special and then I'll have a whole bunch of people. Yeah. And then now I'm like, oh, I I understand pull marketing. And I'm like, oh, that makes so much. Yeah. It's so much easier. It's so much easier. (laughs) Yeah. And it's wild, like probably 98% of us are always doing push marketing. I see it every time, every day I look on social media and it's like all the wrong type of marketing. And then, and then people go like, the market's not working. Instagram's not working. This is not working. <laughs> you know, you, you can't make money as a photographer. It's an algorithm. It's this, it's that. It's like, oh man, no, it's you just yeah. don't know marketing or sales. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest with, you, with ourselves. <laughs> yeah. And then that's going to help you get into the six figure market. Now for you in 12 months time, if you jump on this, podcast and then you said yes I hit six figures and I've taken back more time like how would you feel oh my god amazing I think I would literally be like in shock (laughs) I always I always said to my husband I'm like one day I'm gonna make more than you (laughs) and he's like it's not about money and every time I make money he's like god I love that you work (laughs) so it's good because we'll have the balance of being able to spend time with each other. Like Mm. I don't work on Sundays specifically because he works throughout the week. And then if he's away, I don't see him at all, but most of my weddings are Saturdays. I always have one day of the weekend clear so that we can have a family day and we can spend time together, but I'd love to do like more of that. It's one of the reasons why I actually stepped away from wedding photography myself, like full Mm times, because I had no weekends for the last almost 10 years. (laughs) Because I was shooting like Friday, Saturday, and Sundays, you know, and then editing the other day. So it was it was pretty wild. And if you've got a young family, it's you know, and if your partner's going away, it's not really the best lifestyle. No, I mean I I do love a weekday wedding. Um, but finding someone to watch my daughter while I'm working is super difficult because my family lives six hours away and my in-laws both work. So I'm like, um, but yeah, I do want to, I do want to continue weddings. I love weddings. They're my favorite, but I think just if I can streamline it to like maybe one or two a month instead of like every weekend, then I'd be sweet. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Um, tell me your mindset around like when you first joined the business map, were you like scared at all? Um, were you like second guessing? Were you thinking like it could work for other people, but not for you? Like, tell me sort of like (laughs) what you went through. I mean, I think everyone of us has a little bit of imposter syndrome. I feel like we all think that it's going to be absolutely terrifying and that we can, we can push ourselves, but we might not get to where everyone else has. And like, I knew that if I went into this, I was going to have to push myself like mentally more than I've ever pushed myself before. But I think I'm the kind of person who like, I thrive under pressure. (laughs) I think I'm a little bit ADHD on that level where I just, I need the chaos to thrive. So I'm like, well, I've got to be able to keep up with my promises. So I'm just going to dive in and I'm going to do as much as I can. But yeah, I was absolutely terrified. I was like, what if I've like spent my money, (laughs) my savings, and now I'm like, oh, what do I do? (laughs) Yeah. And how was the onboarding and everything process for you? Like when you joined? Oh, it was so good. I um, instantly like the, the emails that I got and like the steps and how to join circle and how to join the Facebook group and posting things and even like the introductions that we all post when we come into the group, it just, it makes it feel so much more homey. And it's Mm -hmm. like, 
oh, these people are actually going to be there with me and they're going to help me. And it's not just we're all in Jai's group. It's we're all a group and you're like totally. the ringleader. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. It's it's so nice to hear because like I know so often we can join something and I have done before and then you feel like, oh man, I've been left. I don't know what to do now. Like I feel nervous about like posting in the Facebook group or saying hi to anyone, you know, just wait it out. But I notice yeah. like everyone that joins in, they all just go, Hey, my name is so-and-so and I'm doing this and I'm excited to be here. And then everyone's cheering each other on. And it's amazing to sort of see that happen straight away and people to feel welcome straight away. Yeah. Even like a couple of people have posted like intro videos and they're like, I never would normally do this, but I feel so, so safe and so comfortable in this environment. And then like that's amazing. Isn't 10 it? other people have all posted and they're like, yeah, this is my video too. So it's, it's nice. It's a actual community. It's not just mm. like you join and then you're like, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And the, and the cool thing is as time goes on, like I've met so many people in real life and get to do podcast episodes with people and, you know, we have parties and all that kind of stuff. So you do, yeah, it gets like deeper and deeper of like who you actually know and all that kind of stuff. So it's really, really exciting. Really exciting for me, obviously, because I get, get a lot, <laughs> lot of different friends, a lot of yeah. different times. But it's, I think it's cool because um, it's, I guess, like it's a strange community that sort of attracts really like-minded people. Like there's not many people that come in that I've had to deal with or anything that comes in negative or, mm. or judgmental or anything else. So it's, um, it's actually kind of blown our minds a little bit because yeah. you always expect that you're going to have, you know, a, a couple of people that make life hard. Um, and we just <laughs> yeah. haven't had that yet. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. And even like your vibe is like very seventies, very like chill, very, whereas I'm like, I have my, this is literally a boards. goal board and like, or my calendar and my, these are my savings charts. Like it's we're, awesome. we're all in the community together and we all like gel so well. Yeah. Even though everyone's so different. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So just to sort of like finish things up, I actually want to ask you if you are listening in 12 months time, like what would you want to say to yourself? on this podcast? Oh, that's a good one. Is in 12 months, you can actually talk back to yourself right now. Yeah. I, I hope that in 12 months time, I've taken a holiday with my family. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, in, instead of saying, I hope let's commit to something for okay. yourself. So <laughs> think about yourself in 12 months. And I want you to talk to that person, tell you what you're going to do. Well, we're going on a family holiday. I don't know where but we're going to. I don't know how it'll go with a new baby, but it will be it'll be nice to spend some time some family time together and maybe even treat myself to a new pair of work boots or something. <laughs> I don't know. It's it's going to be wild. So you're going to get yourself some new clients? Yeah. New some clients. Amazing clients. I'm going to work some awesome weddings. I'm I'm going to have shot at least 10 more weddings and two of them will be at my dream locations. I'm pushing that one hard. I will have shot at Karoomba because I absolutely love it and I'm desperate to go there and maybe even like the Lush or something in town because there's some really nice spots that I haven't shot yet and I'm I'm going to. I'm very excited to. <laughs> That's awesome. And did you fill your bank account up? Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's what you're going to do for yeah, yourself. I'll actually turn a profit this time next year. It'll be amazing. <laughs> so Future is, is going to be sitting there going like, nice. Thank you for doing all yeah. that work. <laughs> I'm going to go buy myself some new boots. <laughs> yeah. Some comfy ones. <laughs> That's so good. Um, I'm glad that we've done this little time capsule right now uh, and we can sort of, yeah, check in and see how you're going and everything. Where can our listeners go and find you to say hi and to cheer you on? So I am primarily on Instagram because Facebook and I, we don't get along, (laughs) but I am (laughs) One Wild Collective um, on Instagram and onewildcollective.com. Easy. All right, Red Bull, thank you so much for jumping on today and talking with all of our listeners. And um, 
I'm excited to see you grow and to expand and, and hit some goals over the next 12 months. And well done for getting uncomfortable, getting on the Thank podcast you. today <laughs> and making things happen for yourself. Thank you for having me.